All right, I'm going to start the webinar and I'm going to share my screen um, introducing uh, this uh, fair and you guys can uh, mute and take your videos off. Okay, we have some uh, folks filtering in. I just want to welcome you all uh, to the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling. And we have six amazing panelists who will be talking about their institutions and giving you information. Uh, and you're welcome at the bottom of your screen to ask a question anytime throughout the 45 minute session. So at the bottom, there's a Q and A. Feel free to click on that and ask a question to either one panelist or to all the panelists, and they will be sure to check those throughout this session and answer them for you. Uh, they cannot see you, they cannot hear you. So the Q and A part is incredibly important if you have a question for them. The panelists are of course welcome to share their contact information so that you are able to contact them privately, send them an email, give them a call, whatever it is that they prefer. Uh, this is the last day for this college fair. There are two more sessions after this one tonight. So if you would like to attend more, you can sign up for tonight. Uh, and a recording of this is available. This will be available at strivecan, uh, strivescan.com slash Indiana. Um, and that will be pushed out to you and available again on the website for any of the panelists and of course, any of the students. All right, we are going to kick it off with Franklin College. All righty, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let me see if I can get this right. Um, so are we seeing a PowerPoint now? All right, I'm seeing a thumbs up, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and get rolling then. Um, I'll start my timer to keep me honest over here. Um, so first off, I want to just say thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, a lot of pressure going first, but um, I think Franklin's up to the task with that. Um, just a little bit about me before we get going. My name is Kyle Solly. I'm one of uh, six or seven admissions counselors here at Franklin. I'm a 2018 graduate of Franklin College. I um, was a history and political science major with minors in world studies and American studies. I played tennis. I was an RA. Um, so if you have any questions about Franklin, there's a good chance I was involved in it in some, some way. Um, and here's my contact information there in the middle. Um, so if you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly. Um, so just a little bit about Franklin. Uh, we are a school um, just about 20 minutes south of Indianapolis. Um, that was definitely the big selling point for me when I was looking at schools was being this close to Indy. Um, and with that, 100% of our students are going to complete internships and undergraduate research. Um, so a lot of our students are going up to Indianapolis and partnering with Indianapolis. Um, businesses such as you know, Eli Lilly, Salesforce, um, and the state government, things like that. Um, so definitely our location opens us up to a lot of opportunities. Um, we have just over a thousand students, so we are a small campus. Um, with that, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and our average class size is going to be about 15. Um, some of your liberal arts general education classes might be large, uh, closer to 25, um, and some of your smaller classes are going to be closer to, you know, five to 10, um, but for the most part, you'll have that 15 uh, person class size. With that, your professors are gonna know who you are and what you're involved in um, and what your professional goals are and then kind of help steer you towards those. Um, here's just an overview of our majors, um, our minors, our you know, programs that we have. Um, so I just wanna give students a time to take a look over at that um, and look specifically for their majors. Um, we have two graduate programs, the Master's of Science in Athletic Training and a Master's of Science in Physician Assistant Studies. Um, but for the most part, we are um, going to be dealing with bachelor's degrees here. Um, some of our main programs are exercise science, business, accounting, um, anything to do with the sciences. We just built a new science center in 2018 and with state-of-the-art equipment. Um, so those are definitely some of our bigger majors. But as you can see, we've got quite a few of them to offer. Um, just a little overview of why students are going to succeed here at Franklin. Um, like I mentioned, we got you're going to know your faculty. They're going to know you very well. Your professors know what you're involved in. Um, and their goal here is really to see you all succeed. Um, so they're going to put you first. You know, they're not here to do research. They're here to teach. 
Um, you know, all of our classes are, all of our courses are faculty taught. They're not taught by graduate assistants, things like that. Um, they're taught by our professors. Um, with that, each student gets a academic advisor that they're gonna work with for all four years. Um, and that academic advisor is gonna work directly with them to make sure that the student is on the correct path to graduation um, and making sure that we get you out of here in four years. Um, you know, individual teaching in small classes, um, that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, with immersive learning, we have an immersive term here at Franklin. So you have your four month fall semester, your four month spring semester, but in that month of January in the middle, we do a one month immersive term um, where you only take one class, do one internship or study abroad for the month. Um, so you're going to be you know, diving deep in that, that one month. Um, and then we've got our first year launch program designed to help students succeed here at Franklin. So every freshman goes through that class. Um, you know, we are a campus that um, values diversity and inclusive um, community. Um, students at Franklin just tend to be super involved. You heard me talk about the things that I was involved in. That's super common across the board for Franklin. Um, so you're going to see students and faculties, or students that are going to be just involved, involved in, um, you know, all different aspects of campus life. Um, we do have a gorgeous campus here in Franklin, Indiana, um, and we're taking advantage of being in a small town, um, but being so close to Indianapolis. It's a bit of the best of both worlds. Um, we prioritize hands-on learning. We want students to be in, you know, in the field, getting that experience. Um, so regardless of what your major is, you're going to be getting hands-on learning. Um, like I said, 100% of our students are getting internships. Um, and we have faculty and staff here working with students to help secure those internships so it doesn't fall just on you. Um, and then, you know, we want to highlight our lifelong pursuit of learning here at Franklin. About 50 of our students at Franklin are athletes. Um, so here's just a quick overview of um, what our sports look like. Um, we're competitive. Um, we are highly competitive in the Heartland Conference. Um, I know a couple of the other schools in here are also in the Heartland Conference. Um, so I've played tennis matches against both or quite a few of the schools in here. Um, won some, lost some, won't say which way um, they went. Um, but, you know, we compete on the field, we compete off the field. Uh, we've got really good facilities for athletics. Um, and just a look at what um, scholarships and grants we have. Um, as you can see, the total cost at Franklin is going to be $44,000. Um, but no students are paying that, you know. 99% of our students are receiving financial aid of some sort, and most of those students are receiving pretty significant financial aid. Um, and that's prior to the FAFSA being filed. Um, do you want to highlight um, our Ben Franklin Scholar deadline of November 15th? Um, so if you're looking to apply in the uh, class of 2022 and you meet those criteria, I definitely want to just encourage you to apply, uh, but take a look at that list of scholarships. Um, and finally, just like I said, I want to encourage students to apply. Um, we accept both um, the Franklin College application or the Common App. Um, and also want to encourage students to visit campus. We're doing in-person visits right now as well as virtual. Um, so you can use those two QR code codes there um, to access those. Um, and with that, let me unshare my screen. If I can find out how. Got you. There we go. Am I done sharing my screen? Yeah. All righty. Thank you for the help. Yeah, no problem. Well, thank you so much, Kyle from Franklin College. Feel free to put any information into the chat uh, for the attendees. Next up, we have Hanover College. All right. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, you guys. Hopefully you can all see my screen. <clears throat> Uh, my name is Amay Shireman. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Hanover College, and I am um, actually a regional representative, so I'm based here in Indianapolis, and I have the pleasure and privilege of working with students from Marion County and the contiguous counties. Um, my slideshow is getting ahead of me, so I'm going to hope that that doesn't continue to happen. So my contact information is there. If you guys have questions, let me know. I'm here to help and happy to do so. So I'm not going to throw a bunch of like statistics at you. What I wanted to do was just kind of talk to you in general, kind of high level about a place like Hanover College. So why should you consider a small private liberal arts school? 
And that's what we are. We're a small private liberal arts institution. Well, there are a lot of benefits to a place like Hanover College and a lot of benefits to small, right? We're small, so you can do it all. We wanna provide you with individualized instruction, personalized attention. We want you to optimize all of the opportunities you have for arts, athletics, co-curriculars, study abroad, internships, externships. We just think it's really important you're making a significant investment in your future. And we think it's really important that you have the opportunity to maximize or optimize that investment. And sometimes with a larger school, it's hard to navigate all of that successfully. So that's one of the reasons why I encourage students to look at small. We're small, so you can do it all. Um, I like guardrails. I'm a student who without guardrails would have gone off on my own kind of path and probably not have been as successful as I was at a place like Hanover, where I have faculty who knew me by name, by face, who could mentor me, who could coach me, encourage me, um, and really allow me to be my best self. And so I was very grateful for that, that community of support um, and the wraparound services that we we provide students. I just think guardrails are a really great thing, especially when you're venturing out into the world, um, most often for the first time on your own. I think it's important that, um, you know, wherever it is you go, that that particular institution has a close relationship with the greater community, right? You want to know that the community is proud of this institution of higher learning that's in their backyard. You want to know that they support that institution with opportunities for volunteerism, for internships, for externships, experiential learning, job placement. And so I think it's really important to highlight that Hanover does have a really great great relationship, not just with the town of Hanover itself, but with the greater Madison community. We are located in what I call sort of this perfect triangle, um, where we're within short driving distance of Louisville, of Cincinnati, and of Indianapolis. So when you think about all that the greater community beyond Madison has to offer, I think Hanover's in, in that sweet spot. I think it's important for students who are interested in both arts and athletics um, especially those students who are thinking about arts, not necessarily as a major, but just as a passion, something they love doing. You can balance those things at Hanover College, at small private liberal arts colleges. We think it's really important that you bring whatever formula for success you had in high school to college. And if that formula meant playing lacrosse or swimming or being a part of musical theater or just photography, let's say, is a passion or a hobby, we want you to continue to develop those skills and continue to take advantage of opportunities that would let you showcase that particular talent or interest. So it's very easy to navigate the very rich and full life that you would have as a student artist or as a student athlete, again, or small. That makes it very easy for you to to access any types of support services that you might need that are important not only to your academic success or athletic success or success in the arts, but also socially and emotionally. We think it's really important that our students know um, where to go when they need help, who they can count on, who is a part of their village. Um, and so again, another benefit of small is just that sense of connection and community that we are able to provide on a deeper level. So what makes Hanover unique? Well, we are the oldest private liberal arts college in Indiana. So I'm really proud of that. We're getting ready to celebrate our bicentennial here. We do have over 34 majors for students to choose from. So if you're a student who can't make up your mind, you don't know what you wanna do, we've got opportunities for you to explore across the curriculum what it is you might be um, interested in learning a little bit more about. The other benefit I would say to a Hanover College education, you know, we, <laughs> our good friends at Franklin College right up the road can speak to this. We also have a strength in the sciences. And so our backyard is like a living laboratory for students who are interested in chemistry, in biology, in geology, in physics, engineering. We sit literally on 650 of the most beautiful acreage I think you'll find in Indiana. And so it's a great opportunity for students who are interested in environmental sciences or STEM education in general with our new science 
this uh, build out that we've done as a part of our doctorate of physical therapy program that we just launched, um, or just having access, like I said, to 650 acres that lets you get out and explore and sort of learn about the physical natural world. So I'm really proud of the fact that we've been ranked continuously one of the most beautiful campuses um, in the country. I would definitely encourage you to visit all of the campuses um, as you're able to do so that are on this particular call. I know we're really proud of what we have to offer you and excited to show you that. And the majority of us are offering virtual visits as well as in-person visits, um, provided they are safe and secure uh, for both our students as well as our, our guests. So. Don't hesitate to contact me. I dropped my information in the chat. I'm sorry my slides got ahead of me today, um, but hopefully you'll be able to refer back to this information if you have any additional questions. And I thank you for the pleasure and privilege of your time. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Alma College. All right, uh, my name is Erin Miller. It's nice to see everyone, not really see them, but the virtual world we live in, this is how we see each other. Um, I am the out-of-state uh, recruitment coordinator for Alma College. Um, we'll kind of go over some fast facts and then um, I'll kind of tell you a little bit more about Alma itself. So we are home to about 1,450 undergraduate students. Um, we just launched one master's program, but the majority of our campus is undergraduate students. The average class size is about 18. We've got a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. Essentially what those statistics mean to you as a student is that you're gonna get some personal attention um, and really be able to get to know your faculty members throughout your four years at Alma. Our academic calendar is a 441. Essentially what that means for you again is that um, you will have your traditional two semesters and then the once a month semester at the end that we call our spring term is an optional um, time for you to really dig deep into what you're interested in and you can take very intensive um, and a lot of times um, global classes throughout that month. We are home to 27 athletic teams, uh, Go Scots. We're part of the NCAA uh, Division III um, division. Um, we have, even though we have a small amount of students on campus, we are home to at least uh, 100 um, I think it's about 120 now uh, clubs and organizations that our students have created. Um, they range from uh, interest-based to professional-based um, to just social groups um, on campus. So we are located in the middle of Michigan. So we're about an hour north of Lansing, which is our state capital. And we're about 15 minutes south of Mount Pleasant. Um, there's a lot of access. Um, to bigger cities, but we are nice and home to a smaller campus. Um, we are uh, Scotland, USA. As you can see behind me, we've got the tartan. We embrace our Highland heritage and uh, we are home to um, one of the few Highland dance and bagpiping uh, programs in the nation. Uh, academics, we are very hands-on. Um, we really love the fact that, you know, as a college, you're able to really dig deep into what you're interested in. And so uh, our faculty are really um, intentional about how they approach their learning. So um, you are going to be in the sim labs for our nursing programs. You're going to be taking vitals. We're going to be in the exercise testing lab. You're going to be doing the experiments and doing the social work um, that you're studying. So we have over 50 programs of study. Um, we even have a program of emphasis, which essentially is a program that you can create yourself to really make it personal. Um, our most popular programs are business education, pre-law and nursing. We do have a 100% um, acceptance rate into law school for our pre-law program, which is awesome. Um, our, like I said, our nursing program has its own sim lab, which is super cool. And we are home to one of the only undergraduate cadaver labs um, in the nation as well too. We have a lot of uh, what we call experiential learning programs. These are uh, opportunities that you can take on that uh, are really outside of the classroom, um, broader learning experiences. So Posey Global is an opportunity for you to go abroad um, with everything paid for, including the airfare, which is unheard of in a lot of uh, study abroad uh, scholarships. Our Model UN program is nationwide, one of the best. Um, and then we also have uh, our 
International Genetically Engineered Molecule Program that is also known as iGEM. And that is where you can create uh, genetically engineered molecules to kind of help issues in the nation. So we've done ones that clean water and um, tackle heart disease. And so we just won a gold, um, gold medal this year for our work with that. Um, in addition, every student who comes to Alma gets $2,500 to use as our venture grant. This you can use towards research opportunities, towards um, internships, towards co-ops, towards um, study abroad or spring term opportunities. So it's nice that you've got that additional $2,500 that you can use to really help fund a lot of these out of the classroom experiences. Financial aid, um, our merit scholarships, every single student will receive a merit scholarship scholarship once you are accepted to Alma. So they range from 21,000 to 25,000 per year. Um, it's a really awesome opportunity. It's only based on GPA. So um, that's the only thing that we look for um, when we're um, classifying your merit scholarships. We also offer some additional scholarships, alumni or referral. If you know anyone who uh, attends ALMA, has attended ALMA, or anyone who has recommended ALMA to you, including your counselor, um, it can be someone even uh, related to uh, the Indiana uh, Association for College Advising. Um, Scholar Summit is another opportunity for you to earn some additional money, uh, anywhere from two to $4,000 through this interview process. Um, and that is for students who have a 3.4 GPA or higher. Our performing arts and art design scholarships are kind of unique because you can do these scholarships and um, audition for these scholarships um, without having to major or minor in those programs. So it's a really good opportunity, um, like the rep from uh, Hanover talked about, was you can still be involved in a lot of these um, opportunities and a lot of these passions that you have had um, throughout your high school experience and really continue them throughout your college experience without making it your entire focus. We also have some religious leadership scholarships for both religious leadership and interfaith services. Um, our STEM scholarship is also available for students interested in any uh, STEM field. Um, we also just started our esports team, so there's a scholarship for that, as well as our dance team. Um, our opportunity scholarship is for students from underrepresented um, backgrounds, whether that be demographically based or religiously based, or even um, part of the LGBTQ uh, plus community. The Highland Award is for every single student who is out of state, so you will automatically get this one when you apply as well, too, being from Indiana. Um, I did want to put a little push. FAFSA opens October 1st of every year, um, so if you're looking for the 2022 um, entrance, uh, you'll want to look in October. This information is very important when you're looking to um, get your financial aid packages, and even if you don't expect to get anything, uh, from the FAFSA itself. Um, it's really good information uh, that our institutions use um, on our back end. So application information, we only require high school transcripts for the 2021 year. We are test optional forever. And so for 2022 um, entrance, you'll need um, just your uh, transcripts as well too. Um, Right now, here are the uh, restrictions for what we have for admission. It's always free to apply on our website and also on the Common App. And then I just wanted to share uh, some uh, information about me. I'm also going to put this in the chat as well, too. But I am the out-of-state recruiter, uh, and so that uh, I will be your rep. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Caitlin is up next. And of course, you may put any of that information in the chat. And then a student did ask a question that any of the panelists can answer uh, when you get the chance. Thank you. So I'm Caitlin Ebbinghouse. I'm from Wabash College. Um, I'm a senior assistant director of admissions and I cover areas of really, really the donut counties, northern, eastern, and um, western sides of Indianapolis, as well as the East Coast and New England areas. But um, I want to give you a little bit more information about Wabash and hopefully information that will um, set us apart a little bit from some of these other schools. I know that you're hearing a lot of similar things um, as we're all small private liberal arts colleges, but again, hoping to, to set Wabash apart a little bit. Um, so Wabash is located in Crawfordsville, Indiana. And we're located, um, it's about 45 minutes northwest of Indianapolis. So you've got the accessibility of Indianapolis that's close by. We're just two and a half hours south of um, south side of Chicago. Um, so again, similarly to other schools, we have a great location for accessibility to larger cities, but 
Wabash itself is again on 66 acres, only about 900 students. And we are a men's college, one of um, two true all men's colleges that remain here in the US. Um, while we don't have the uh, gender diversity amongst our student bodies, we certainly have it within our staff and faculty, and we have it within the geographic and demographic diversity of our students. So 31 states and 19 countries are represented within our small student body, and 22% of those students identify as multicultural. Wabash is also named a top 30 best value college. So we like to say at Wabash that our students learn more. And we, we say that through the liberal arts, but also immersion learning and our Wabash X programs. So in addition to your major or minor, which it's not uncommon, you'll find that Wabash students are participating and pursuing more than one major or minor. But in addition to that, they're doing Wabash X programs, which are high impact experiential learning programs that you're doing outside of the classroom. So um, they include, for example, the Center for Innovation, Business and Entrepreneurship, um, you're doing real world projects, you're working with real companies and organizations on problems, um, problem solving, you're getting paid for your work. Um, you're also getting different business certifications in that program during your four years. So that's just one example of what a pro Wabash X program can offer you. But we offer those um, in a variety of areas and those are open to all majors. So you don't specifically have to be um, a business related major to pursue the CIBE program. Um, also, we do immersion learning at Wabash. Um, this is where you take a class and then you take what that theoretical learning from the classroom into an immersive experience somewhere else. So for example, last year, United Kingdom, Germany, Ireland, Peru, um, those are just some examples of some of the places our students have gone on immersion trips. Something that's unique to Wabash in that sense is this immersion trips are completely paid for. So you can take as many immersion classes as you want you don't have to apply for a specific scholarship to have that opportunity paid for. Um, it's part of that uh, experience. And so I like to um, always call Wabash kind of an all-inclusive resort um, if in comparison that once you're at Wabash, opportunities um, are not just for those who can afford it in addition to their tuition. Um, opportunities are for everyone at Wabash. Um, it's ranking like these that allow our students to learn more as well. So Wabash ranks number one for the best alumni network in the nation. Um, and how that benefits you as a student is scholarships, internships opportunities, mentorship. Um, and I could go on and on about how truly important that alumni network will be um, during your time as a student and well beyond your four years at Wabash. We also rank number one for internship opportunities. Um, having internship opportunities and gaining meaningful experiences during your four years as a student um, is going to be really integral in how you then pursue a um, professional career post Wabash. And so uh, these rankings come from um, Princeton Review, which is a really reputable source of rankings. Um, and these are all actually consistent with the 2020 ranking, 2021 rankings as well. We also rank number seven for best career services, eight for professors get high marks, and top 20 for best classroom experience. So when you think about your college search and you think about the things that are important to you, think about meaningful, impactful relationships um, and associate that with Wabash College. There we go. So Wabash graduates also go on to earn more. Um, and a lot of these things I'm gonna share with you contribute to that. So um, on graduation day in 2019, our, our on graduation day, 87% of our graduating seniors had secured their first destination post Wabash. So we're talking a job, a fellowship, um, maybe they've decided to join the military and go off to officer candidate school. Um, and then also this year, uh, the class of 2020, secured their first destination, 98% um, of them within six months. One thing I wanna be more specific about is that is 100% knowledge. So um, you might see these statistics very commonly put out by institutions. And oftentimes it's a certain percentage of the students that they've had a conversation with. But what we can guarantee is that we've had a conversation with every student um, until they reach that first destination. Also during a worldwide pandemic, 88% of our current students had a summer internship in 2020. 
Um, to me, that's pretty incredible considering the circumstances that um, a lot of students were dealt during a pandemic where a lot of their internships were taken away, um, jobs were taken away and so forth. Um, and lastly, I wanna point out that Wabash graduates um, are ranked number three in the Midwest for highest earning alumni. So early career salary, you're looking at about $65,000 and then a median mid-career salary at $139,000. These are just some of the places that our graduates go on to um, get internships, graduate school um, and, excuse me, fellowships. So just so you can see tangibly, um, what are some places that our graduates are going post Wabash or during their time at Wabash? And I know I'm over on time, so um, I will go ahead and move forward so I can give my, um, my colleagues at other institutions an opportunity to talk about their schools. If you would like more information on Wabash, I will drop my information into the chat so that you can contact me um, after this presentation. Thank you so much. All right, it seems like we already are ready to go next. Hi there, so I'm Jindaya Herbert. I'm an admissions counselor at Earlham College. I'm glad to have everybody here today, even though I can't see you. I'm glad you're able to join. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Earlham. I actually recruit in Indiana, so Indianapolis area, um, but I, we do have other admissions counselors. So if you need their contact information, because they're recruiting in different parts of Indiana, feel, feel free to let me know and I'll put my message in the chat as well. And so we are located in Richmond, Indiana. It's in the southern part of Indiana. We are about 10 minutes from the Ohio border. So we're actually closer to Dayton, Ohio, if you're looking for a bigger city that we'll send our students to for internships, connections, or just to go have fun. Um, and then Indianapolis, Indiana is about an hour and a half away, same with Cincinnati, Ohio. So we'll send a lot of our students there as well. We are located on 800 acres. You can see a little bit of the 200 acres where in the back of, background of my screen, um, where we have our academic buildings, as well as um, the dining hall, residential halls, and then the back part of campus that we call that back part of campus at Earlham is more so hiking trails, streams, ponds. Um, we have an equestrian barn as well. Um, and it's a barn co-op. Mm -hmm. And then we also have uh, the athletic fields, and we also have Miller Farm where our students learn about sustainable agriculture. And then Richmond, Indiana is a bit of a small town, small town vibe, it's about 36,000 residents. And so we are a private liberal arts college as a lot of my colleagues have already talked about, they're private liberal arts colleges too. Um, but we were founded in 1847 by the Quakers. So we are a Quaker college. Uh, that being said, there aren't any religious requirements on campus and we welcome all faiths and non-faiths. Um, I will say you're always welcome to attend any Quaker meetings and I highly recommend you check it out just to see what it's like. Uh, but our Quaker values do play out into our education. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, in terms of our student body, uh, we have about 800 students, um, as I said, spread across 800 acres. So there's plenty of room to spread out and that's been really helpful during this time period. We have about 25% of our students identify as US students of color. And then we have about 22% of our students are international students. Um, so we have students from over 40 US states and 55 countries. So a pretty diverse campus. Um, at Earlham, we really do believe in the power of learning and community. And we also believe in the power of our students to go out and change the world for good. Uh, so how we help you is that we have our faculty and staff, they are very talented and they are dedicated to making sure you find your true potential, but also forge your own distinct path at Earlham. So our Quaker values do play out into our education and they shape our community on campus. So we have five principles and practices. So if you know nothing about Quakers, just know that there are a variety of different Quakers around the world and they have different principles and practices, but these five are the ones that shape our community. And that's going to be community, simplicity, respect for persons, peace and justice, and integrity. And that informs the kind of community we strive to be, where it's equitable and also everyone feels like they're included within the community, the community that's really important to us. 
Earlham has typically been built on a history of bringing the world to Earlham, as well as sending our students and faculty out through a variety of off-campus opportunities. We're not doing so right now, but we're hoping to get back to that in the summer. Um, and definitely in terms of rigor, we don't value rigorous academics for the sake of separating the weak from the strong. Uh, we really do believe that rigor at Earlham means challenging yourself and others to do more than you expected. So at Earlham, we offer over 40 different majors and minors. Also not listed on the screen are our applied minors. And the only difference with an applied minor is that you're expected to do a co co-curricular activity. So think an internship or volunteer hours. Um, I will say the more popular programs on campus tend to be our pre-professional pathways. So think a major in biochemistry, biology, neuroscience, um, as well as uh, biochemistry, if I didn't say that, or chemistry. And then psychology is another top major, as well as global management, which is more so our business major, but it's a little bit more internationally focused, as well as computer science. And we have a few new majors this year, so media and communications, as well as exercise science and data science, so another few options. And then we have quite a few interdisciplinary majors as well. So think international studies, peace and global studies, um, and environmental sustainability. And you're always welcome to go to our website, which I'll put in the chat so you can see which majors appeal to you and see what kind of classes and faculty members we have on campus. We are offering visits on campus, so I hope you'll visit either virtually or in person. We're definitely welcome you. And then in terms of our average class size, so definitely smaller class sizes, about 13 students. Um, the biggest classes I've heard of on campus are the most I've heard are 60 students. And even then we try to break those down into smaller lecture sizes because we only have one lecture hall on campus um, and your labs will be capped at 20 students because we do not want to give up on that personalized education. Um, students and professors are on a first name basis. Um, I feel like that's the same for the other colleges here, um, but that's also part of our Quaker values. We really don't believe in titles or social hierarchy. So we wanna make sure that we know that our students are gonna spark conversation among our faculty. And we definitely value collaboration over competition at Earlham. And then here at Earlham, we have what's called the Epic Advantage or the Earlham Advantage. You'll hear both names. Um, but the idea is that we guarantee funding for all of our students to either go on an internship experience or to do a research trip, typically abroad. And I will, I'm losing a little bit of time, so I'll just go over that. We have 60 clubs and organizations on campus. Uh, we are Division Three Athletics, part of the Heartland Conference. And we do have residence halls as well as themed houses and apartment style living. We are still taking applications, so I welcome your applications and I will give you my information in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have DePaul University. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone, and welcome to DePaul. I'm Ben Hatchett, one of our assistant directors of admission and uh, counselors for Indiana and uh, a little bit of the Northeast US. So I just dropped in my contact information. I'm about to drop my contact information into the chat here and share my screen. So here at DePaul, you have access right away to a variety of different opportunities and programming, but we're like many on the call, a small private liberal arts college located really in the center of Indiana. And uh, we have a lot of different programmings uh, going on. Sorry, I had a couple of chat things coming on. So what you can do at DePaul right away is dive into that 100% residential college opportunity. Here you see beautiful East College smack dab in the middle of our screen. Um, what's unique about DePaul is why we are a school of just around 2,000 students. We actually have 7,700 acres that make up campus. Over a third of our students get involved right away um, in a variety of programming, including athletic opportunities where 30% of our students check out um, being a Division Three athlete at DePaul. Um, one of the big things that I like to point out right away is that our students are able to dive into a picturesque campus, as you can see, recognized nationally as one of the 50 most beautiful college campuses in America, nationally ranked in the state, number one in the state of Indiana as a liberal arts college and nationally ranked institution as well. We've talked a lot about that close-knit community, and as you can see, eight to one of our students and faculty 
uh, ratio there where you really get to know your professors and they in turn really know you. What I loved about my DePaul experience is that I could go right away to meet with my professors, even if it was a class I was struggling in, they wanted to be there to help you. So what many of you are probably thinking about as you're looking at schools and starting to figure out your college education and the college search, what are you going to study? What are you going to major in? You probably guessed it, that going to class might be a big part of your four years in college. What this means is uh, for us, about four to four and a half classes of your four years at DePaul are gonna happen every semester. So it's usually a pretty lighter course load than you might be used to in your current high school curriculum. I'll never forget the moment I got to DePaul and realized that my entire afternoon might be open on a certain day and I might not have class in the afternoon. What we want you to do though, is put those things together in a meaningful way. As you can see, we have two schools at DePaul. We have our college liberal arts, as well as our school of music. In our college liberal arts, you'll find over 49 different majors and 56 minors. I say over those numbers you see on your screen because we actually have it where you can create your own and design your own major at DePaul. If we would have met for a session virtually or in person a couple of years ago, you wouldn't see global health or maybe neuroscience on this listing of programs. Those are actually newer programs at DePaul because our faculty were listening to you, what our students were wanting. And they were able to get together to see, oh my gosh, we had so many students creating their own independent interdisciplinary majors that they matched what our students were looking for. What I like about this quick snapshot, again, this is not an exhausting list, but you see our top 10 majors listed in popularity. And what I love about it is you'll see that the arts and humanities, the social sciences, the science, mathematics, and STEM are well represented in this listing. At DePaul, we want you to take again, four to four and a half classes a semester and you could also continue your studies in the School of Music. This is the only time at all that you're gonna see a line literally between the, two, the two schools because it is all one DePaul, one DePaul University. In our School of Music, this is audition based, so a little bit different than just applying directly to DePaul for admission. With the School of Music, once you go through the audition process, you can check out our four main degree offerings, which include music performance, musical arts, education, and of course, a five-year dual degree where you can graduate from both schools respectively. But maybe you're joining us today and you yourself are undecided and that's totally okay. Most of our students are doing that. We actually want you to get here undecided, undeclared. Our students will declare their major by sophomore year, often in March. So that gives you actually a year and a half to pick and choose classes that you truly are interested in before you have to lock into a decision just yet. While I talked about the classroom experience, a big part of your four years at DePaul is gonna be that out of the classroom experience. What this means is you're doing things. It could be a research opportunity. It could be an event around the DePaul community. It could be an off-campus experience like an abroad trip. Here you see our schedule broken down. During that fall and spring semester when a majority of your classes are happening, you can do things always while you're on campus, but we also take a break the month of January and May called winter term and May term where you can dive into an intensive month long experience. And I promise no student is harmed in the top picture here. The woman getting fitted with the neck brace does not have a broken neck on campus, I promise. But what they're doing is participating in our EMT winter term prep course. So if you are an aspiring healthcare physician or healthcare professional in the room, that EMT winter term can be great, but you can also see robotics, you see VR and visualization in action, you see STEM represented in the sciences, but study abroad is huge. I mentioned in the chat earlier, we're fourth in the country in study abroad with 70% of our students completing a off-campus abroad experience at the full semester level before they graduate. It amazes me to say every time because I'm somehow part of the 30% that didn't, where you're able, I, I went on a program just at the month long level to Greece led by DePaul professors. And last but not least, we wanna make sure you're putting that downtime to use, which is including internships on or off campus during your four years. Another thing I wanna, point out a little bit is the fun stuff, what's happening on campus, what you can do. We are, of course, that example of 100% residential campus where you're able to dive into a lot. And I know you cannot be here truly 24-7 like I can. So if you're looking to schedule that visit and set up those next steps, our campus is open and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Uh, there's still time to throw things into the chat. Um, we're gonna, just going to do this in kind of a quick uh, succession. If you could please um, answer what advice you would give someone uh, through the college search process. And I wrote in the chat for both you and uh, the students that we're gonna do this pretty quickly so we can stop right at the 45. 
So if we could start uh, with Franklin College. Uh, biggest advice would be to get on campus and just get a feel for it because um, you want to find a place that feels like home. Um, so that's, you know, keep it quick and short. That's my advice. So I'm Ace Shireman, Hanover College, and what I'm going to recommend that you do is make a list of what you need and what you want, because those are two very different things. So think about what it is you need in order to make college happen, in order for you to be successful in college, and what it is you want. What are sort of the added benefits that you're looking for but won't make or break your decision to attend that institution? They would simply be nice enhancements. A lot of times just going through that exercise will allow you to very quickly compile a list of who fits into which of those buckets. Um, my advice is to make the decision for you and yourself. Um, you'll have a lot of influence, but it'll come down to where you're comfortable and where it feels like home. Yeah, my advice would be everything else everyone said, but also to think outside of the box, right? We grow up and we always go with what we know. So mom went to IU, dad went to Manchester, wherever. Um, I encourage you to think outside of that, explore a school that you would think maybe that you wouldn't like at all, um, and see where it leads you, you know, go to a small, medium and large and check them all out. Um, cause I can tell you Wabash is so unique and it's always the kid that says, I never thought I would come to a men's college. I never thought I'd come to Wabash, but so-and-so told me to check it out. And I did, and I fell in love. So, um, I would encourage you to think outside of what, you know. And I would just say everything everyone else just said, but also connect with as many current students as possible. Some great advice has been offered, but start checking your email. We love using email. Your college professors are really going to want you to start checking your email. So I know you're about to get a lot bombarded from us sometime, but start combing through it and get comfortable reaching out to all of us. We're here to help and we can't wait to keep in touch. All right, great advice. Thank you so much to um, all the panelists and thank you students for joining. I put some information in the chats. Uh, this recording will be available in less than a week at strivescan.com forward slash Indiana. And again, thank you so much and good luck in your uh, college search process. Have a good night.